real simple. Where are you? Who are you with? And how do you hold out? I'm in Toronto. Uh, my wife's from here. So I'm, we're just hanging out here with, with our five-month-old daughter. So, um, you know, we left Denver fairly early as we weren't sure how travel restrictions were going to be affected. But but we got here and, and obviously with, with having my in-laws and things like that here, uh, it was pretty easy to, to make the decision to come and hang out here. Thanks, Gabe. Zach, uh, who's your guest? This is Jax. Um, we are here in, uh, still here in Minnesota, um, hanging out at home. Um, these guys, school and, uh, got canceled about two weeks ago, so they've been at home keeping us busy. Um, we've been playing a lot of sports um, in the basement and outside, and so we are, uh, we're doing well here. Great, thanks, Blake. Uh, yeah, we're we're up in Winnipeg. Um, my wife. Uh, we have three kids: uh, seven-year-old boy Louis, four-year-old daughter Lenny, and a two-year-old uh, boy Mace. So we're uh, we're full-time teachers, um, nannies. It's a full full-day job. I'm more tired, I think, now than I was uh, a few weeks ago. So. Um, yeah, we're just cooking and cleaning and trying to teach, and we're keeping it together. Jamie. Yeah, I'm just in uh, here in Dallas. I, I live here year-round with, with my girlfriend, and, uh, you know, no kids, so it sounds like I got it easiest out of uh, all the boys in this call. So, so it, glad you brought that up. So we were, I've noticed on all the other calls that the divide is kids – you're just trying to get through the day. No kids. How do I figure out something to do during the day? So uh, let's start with uh, Zach. Try to explain to Jamie what this is like. Um, well, my two-year-old gets up about five in the morning right now. So I get up with him and then wait for the other two to get up at seven. And then it's like Wheels was saying, it starts cooking. Um, and then they do a little schoolwork and... Um, and then we all look at each other. What are we going to do next? You know, <laughs> and uh, will, him and I will play a little hockey. Um, his sister will be hanging out with us too. And uh, the two-year-old is a handful right now, though. He naps from one, from like one to three, and that's our time to take a deep breath. But other than that, um, he is, he's full-time. He's nonstop. These guys at least can play together a little bit now and give us some break. But the two-year-old, um, he's all over the place. Sound familiar, Blake? Yeah, um, my my seven year old and my four year old daughter they pretty much fight all day. So <laughs> it's not like a lot of playing together. It's more like uh, it's a battle. And then uh, yeah, I mean Mace, like you know, since he's been born, like he doesn't want anything to do with me really until like a month ago. And now now that I'm here all the time, he's starting to realize that I'm. I am his dad. And uh, so, yeah, he's a, he's tough. He's really tough. I mean, terrible twos. And now he's, he's turning three in June and big personality. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely it's interesting, you know, seeing what Sam, my wife, Sam, you know, is dealing with on a daily basis. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no road trips coming up soon. So it's, we're, we're hunkered down. So I know you have more appreciation for moms and teachers, but how about the linesmen? trying to break up the, the stuff that goes on in the ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Gabe, you're at the start of this. What are, what are you listening to? And are, are you dreading it or looking forward to it? No, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I we've been trying to, Melissa, my wife and I, we've been pretty cautious about not wishing, you know, her, her life away or looking forward to too much ahead to you know when they can walk or when they can talk or whatever we're trying to just enjoy everything as it comes I mean like I was saying earlier it's uh, she's five months old she's not mobile yet she doesn't move she's she's sort of getting to the the stage where she's she's trying to roll around and she's she can almost sit on her own and things like that so it's it's a bit of a different level than than uh than Zach and wheels are at but uh but it's been a lot of fun, and uh, obviously, you, you definitely get an appreciation of what the the wives and the girlfriends are going through when you know when we're on the road and, and it's nonstop because it's you know we're up 
I'm up feeding her at night. Uh, you know, sometimes my wife will, will, will get to sleep and I'll, I'll take the, the early shift and, and we'll try to mix it up that way. But it's been, uh, it's been fun being a full-time dad for, for a change. Jamie, does this all make you jealous or does this make you think, God, thank God I have quiet in my house. Uh, we'll get there one day. Uh, you know, for right now, we're, we're me and my, my girlfriend, Katie, we're enjoying just, uh, you know, being together. It's uh, a little bit of a different time. We're looking at each other, um, you know, throughout the day here being like, what do we do next? What do we do next? We're, these guys are probably go, go, go all day, but um, my time will come and, and I'll, I'll let these guys, uh, you know, do the work for now. <laughs> Gabe, to get serious for a minute, uh, obviously two, two players on your team have tested positive. Uh, how's everybody doing in Colorado? Uh, how's the team doing and how are you keeping people together? Well, I mean, it's we've been been apart since our last game, which was March 11th or whatever. So, I mean, right away, I know in our household, we took it pretty seriously. Obviously, for, for the major sports leagues to, to shut down, we realized that it had to be pretty serious. So we we stayed in Denver for about five days and didn't see a single person. Um, obviously, we it took a while for us to find out that, that a couple of the guys had, had tested positive. But um, from the conversations I've had with them, they've recovered well and, and they're doing well. And um, and in our household, we're, we're doing good and we seem to have been lucky. And, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things where it's uh, – you don't know how, you know how how serious it was going to be when at first the news came out that that the league was was on pause and and uh, I'm sure it was up to everybody at that point to to kind of quarantine themselves. But at the same time, it was, you know, guys that kind of left on their own. Single guys are are living on their own. They got you know nothing to keep them busy. So, um, but I'm glad everybody's doing well and and uh, thinking about hoping that everybody else in Denver and everybody staying safe and healthy back there. Thanks, Gabe. So how are you guys all keeping your teams together? we got three three captains here. Uh, Jamie, group chats, uh, do you do anything video-wise? And then some other guys say these get a little weird from time to time. So don't go into details, but just let us know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, probably most teams have a team group chat going. We definitely do here in Dallas. And, um, you know, it keeps us entertained, keeps us talking to each other and, I feel like I haven't I've done more FaceTiming in the last month or so with, uh, you know, not only teammates, but friends and family than I, I've done in my whole life. How about you, Blake? Yeah, same, just uh, group group chat. Um, you know, guys, uh, guys pretty much took off right when they had the opportunity. So I think we're pretty spread out. Um, but yeah, just Checking in with guys, you know, everyone's doing, uh, you get the odd, you know, picture or whatever to, to kind of break, break up the day. And we did a, we tried like a team FaceTime at one point and it was, it was a mess. So we haven't done it again, but uh, yeah, it's, you know, more just everyone's throughout North America right now and just seeing how everyone's doing and where everyone's at. And um, so far everyone's doing pretty good. Jack, is there any breakdown by age or anything about guys who really keep in touch on these things and the guys who have just kind of disappeared? On the uh, on on, group on chats? group chats and everything, yeah. Um, a lot of the – I would say a lot of the videos come from the younger guys. Um, but I think it entertains the older guys also. <laughs> um, but w w same as our teams, we got some guys take off, and it was pretty – the, the chat was pretty active uh, right away, but I feel like as this has gone on, it's been less and less. And I don't think anyone's writ, written into it for, for about a week now. Um, but it was, we had some, uh, some funny stuff going around at first, but now it's just, like I said, everyone left, everyone took off and um, we kind of stopped talking to each other, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So instead of doing, aside from doing seven-year-old curls, uh, how are you staying in shape? I, you know, everybody would think that all professional athletes have, you know, amazing gyms at home, but you have everything at work. So why would you have anything in your house? I'm just wondering how creative you have to get. We, we've got a little sport court in the basement, um, but very limited, um, limited workout stuff. I ended up ordering a bike just to kind of get the heart rate. I'm not much of a runner, so got a bike to try to get the heart rate up a little bit. Um, but I mean, we play some one-on-one -on -one down there and 
uh, he keeps me he keeps me sharp. Uh, hopefully, it'll carry over. How about you, Gabe? How you staying in shape? Yeah, this is one of the places where we we spend some time in the summer. So last last year, I spent some time and and, and effort and money into you know installing the gym downstairs and and uh, you know got a decent setup and and at least I have the opportunity to, to do some stuff and and for me working out is just keeping me from going crazy. So uh, I get really impatient around the house if I don't have anything to do and if I can't burn some energy. So I've been been doing some lighter stuff down there just to keep keep in shape and and really just uh i guess get away from diaper duty and and, and feeding feeding linnea uh a few times a day so it's been uh it's been good and i'm lucky lucky that way to have that uh feel for guys that that are stuck in apartments or, or people that are stuck in apartments somewhere and don't have the opportunity to whether go out in your backyard or or uh you know do exercises in the gym you guys are all veterans and you've all figured it out how to kind of prime yourself for when you're about to play. So I'm, I'm imagining that the, the uncertainty about when you're going to play again complicates the whole, the whole matter. Right, Jamie? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, we all stay prepared and, um, you know, we're all itching to get back on the ice whenever that might be. Um, you know, so we prepare in the right way. And then when the time comes, uh, we'll all be ready. Blake, how about you? Yeah, pretty much the same as Landy. I mean, um, my wife kicked me out of our uh, one of our garage stalls last year, so we put like a little gym in this fall. Um, between that, we have a Peloton here too. Um, obviously, in Winnipeg in the winter, there's not many options, so we kind of loaded up some stuff uh, within the last year here. And so, yeah, it's just more more. It's an hour to to get away from, you know, all the all the duties you have around the house. And so we kind of give each other an hour a day to, to do what it is. I mean, I find half the time I'm just laying on the ground, you know, in silence to, to try to figure things out. But uh, it's, so yeah, just, just trying to stay, stay ready just in case you get the call that things are going to come back and, you know, you don't want to be too, too far. We've gotten far some, uh, some questions submitted by reporters and I'll, I'll throw them to the ones that uh, they were designated for Blake, for you, Jamie Thomas at Jess TV asked, uh, what did you really like about the way the team was playing just before the pause? And does it give you confidence that uh, when we return, you can, you can rev it right back up again? Yeah, I, I mean, we dealt with a lot this year. Um, you know, injuries uh, were a big part of that. Um, so, you know, we were kind of playing shorthanded a lot of the year. And I think finally towards the end there, we were starting to get healthy. Um, you know, we, we finally had uh, our deep was, was healthy again. Some of our, our guys up front got healthy. Our goalie was, you know, was playing out of his mind. So, um, Helly gave us a chance to, to kind of hang in there and, uh, you know, stay within, you know, striking distance of the wild card. And, um, yeah, we were starting to string some wins together. So it, it was nice. It was nice to, to have a, a full lineup and kind of see what type of team we had. And uh, I think we were trending in the right direction. You know, our, I know our, our March schedule, um, it wasn't heavy in terms of games, but we were going to have some some tough games to play and some big games against teams that were either right in front of us or even with us in the standing. So regardless of if we ended up making the playoffs, we gave ourselves an opportunity and we had something to play for. So that was exciting. Back, similar question for you from Mike Russo at The Athletic, and he's specifically wanted to ask about the, the on-ice relationship you were developing with Kevin Fiala and, and how he's kind of emerged and how impressed you've been with him. He's uh, He's been playing awesome for us. Um, he was on he was on a tear um, before this thing this thing ended up happening. Um, so hopefully he'll, you know, keep that momentum up that he had. Um, but even – my daughter was starting to grow a little affection for him at their school. They did a, they did a local sports hero thing and they all knew that I was there, that the, that the twins were, were ours and were mine my kids. And so I'd say like 90% of them wrote, you know, Zach Preezy is their favorite and except my daughter, she wrote Kevin Fiala. So that's, that's how things are going in our whole household right now. But, He's, he's, he's been playing awesome. Um, and as far as the team goes, we, I think it took a, a couple games. I mean, I, these guys have been through it when you have a coaching change, um, especially that late in the season, there's not a ton that you switch, but there was a couple things that Dean wanted to do a little differently. And, and 
I think it took us a few games, but once we got the hang of it, um, I think we all liked the way we were playing and um, playing with a lot of speed and a lot more pace than we had been. And um, we're starting to string, win some games and um, we are feeling good about it. And hopefully, hopefully that can continue, but you know, same, similar to, to what Blake was saying, we're, we're right there in the mix with that bottom group of teams uh, trying to get that wild card spot. And, um, so we, uh, you know, we, we, we liked the, the direction that we were going. Gabe, the last two years have been just a, a straight up rise for your team. And, and you must have been so excited. And I'm wondering how frustrating that is that now you're, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm sure it's frustrating for, for everybody right now, but uh, it's, this has been probably the first time in, in nine years I've been in Denver that, that we felt confident, really confident about the group that we had and actually feeling like you had a, had a shot at this thing. And, and we weren't just playing to make the playoffs. We were, you know, chasing down St. Louis and we we're two points behind and with a game in hand. And, and we knew we had them coming up in game 82, last game of the season. So, um, and just like wheels was saying, we we're dealing with a lot of injuries and, and, uh, and some, some key guys were out, but um, guys were starting to, guys were starting to come back. And, and uh, um, so it came at a, at a bad time. Uh, some people would say it came at a good time because it allowed us to be healthy, come back and be healthy. But, but then again, we don't know how long this is going to last for either. So, um, but it, it's, uh, I like the way our group was playing. We were finding different ways to win hockey games. And I think we we're seven, two and one in our last 10. And um, yeah, we're just gearing up for a playoff run. And then this happened. Jamie, it's a similar trajectory for your team. Good playoff run last year and a lot of high hopes this year, hosting the Winter Classic and all. Uh, how frustrating is it to, when you have such high hopes for a playoffs to be waiting right now? Yeah, it's frustrating. I think we're, we're all in the same boat, um, you know, with our division especially being, being so strong. Um, you know, Minnesota and Winnipeg uh, playing great hockey. Colorado, obviously, um, we know how good they are. Um, you know, for the break, I think it, it couldn't have come at a better time for us, though. Uh, we were slipping a bit. I think we lost six in a row. So, uh, you know, I know our group was like, all right, this is this ain't so bad. Uh, but now that we're – it's been, uh, you know, a few weeks and we don't know how much longer it's going to be, uh, you know, I think we're all just you know, wishing we could get back out there on the ice. All right. Let's, uh, let's see if we can lighten this up a little bit or get you guys to chirp at each other. So – uh, the other three guys on the call, look at them, think about them. What's the thing that you missed the least about playing against the other three guys? Go ahead, Zach, start us off. Um, well, Gabe and Jamie, I feel like they'll KO you if you got your head down in the pocket. I don't miss that. Gabe's got me a couple times. I know that. Um, Jamie's taking some runs at me too. Uh, but he usually laughs about it after, so that's fine. Um, and wheels, uh, the, uh, the guy just gets points against us. I don't, every time <laughs> I feel like he comes to Minnesota, the guy just gets points and it drives me nuts, but um, that uh, I don't miss that about these three guys. It's a nice break away from it. Amy, is that the key? After you hit somebody, you take a, you just laugh about it. What's that? Sorry. He said you'd laugh when you, after you take a run at him. So it's okay. No, I, I just, I, I like playing, uh, you know, the game hard and, uh, you know, I try and play it the right way. I, I have a lot of fun with it. Um, you know, I do a, a lot of talking on the ice uh, to other players. And um, I know uh, me and Wheels have uh, – I think I ask him to fight every game we play. Uh, <laughs> there, was one, there was one game you asked – I think we faced off against each other like 20 times. He asked me to fight 20 times. Thank you. <laughs> It's like, just like third period of tie game, like whatever. He's like, Are we going? I'm like, I mean, <laughs> have you guys fought? <laughs> no, 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 not yet, not Thank yet. God. God. But uh, actually, I don't think I ever met you, Wheels, until uh, last summer in, in Toronto. That's right. So we, we had a good time, we had a couple laughs, and uh, you know, a couple cold ones over it. And uh, I think uh, I came out of the gates hot again this year, and I was asked him to go one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky because I, I was playing center for a little while, so I got a, I, the unique thing about I, I face whenever we play all three of you guys, I'm facing off against all three of you the entire game, so uh, 
it's always like, you know, I always know that whenever we're playing all three, I mean, really everyone in our division, but especially you three guys that every shift is going to be against you. And, you know, there've been, um, there've been some tough nights, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think it's a good thing, you know, cause it, it brings out the best in you. If you don't have a, if you don't have your best, you're going to, it's going to be a tough night. And, and, um, but yeah, it's, it's always, I mean, those are, those are the things that you miss about the game. You miss like, sort of that adrenaline going into it. Like, all right, shoot. I know I know I'm telling Benny fifteen times no tonight and you know, maybe you know, maybe one of these days. But um, no, it's great. It's it's what it's what it's what I love about the job. It's it's kind of that um, it's what gets you going. Yeah, we're we're all competitive guys and we're all leaders on our team. So it's fun to line up against uh, other players' best players and uh, you know I know I have a, a lot of fun with it. Gabe, I don't think there are any linesmen listening on the call. Which one of these guys cheats the most in the circle? Oh, I don't Gabe's know. Gonna, I mean, I, Gabe's going to say the stars as a, as a whole team. Yeah, the stars are they're painful in the face-off circle. But, um, no, I mean, just like the other guys are saying, these are three guys that, that play the game the right way. And uh, they play hard. You know, it's going to be a long night. And uh, it's going to be physical. And, and uh, you know, Zach is a – you know, just a handful in the off offensive zone, and especially for our defensemen in and around the net, he's, he, he's always finding loose pucks in there, and he scored a bunch of goals. Even that that one time I took a run at you in Denver, you ended up getting the puck back, and two seconds later it was in the back of my net. And, and I hit you hard, but I ended up getting cut, had to go back and get stitches. I was going to say, I think you went to the locker room after that one. <laughs> yeah, and I remember hearing the, the, the Minnesota crowd cheering. But, um, but yeah, wheels, obviously, he's a – uh, one of the best playmakers, uh, I think, are we always seem to struggle against Winnipeg's PP and and, and Wheels is the guy, you know, running the shots on that thing. He's he's a good good playmaker and and Benny. I mean, that's it's going to be a long night when you're playing against him and and obviously a tough customer. So uh, yeah, these are three guys that you don't miss playing against, but at the same time you do because it's like we also saying it's the competitive thing that that we love doing and and uh it sucks not being able to do it right now now let's see if you guys can be candid or if you're going to be politicians uh the teammate you would most want to be quarantined with and the teammate you'd least want to be quarantined with uh, zach i guess your family wants kevin piala over but uh i know i think my know. wife probably does too <laughs> um <laughs> um <laughs> the mo uh, most we'll start least least probably be greenway um he's just great guy but lazy and tired all the time and the slob a little bit you know like on his on the airplane his 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 chair is just gross and crap everywhere and um and i from what i heard around his apartment's just pizza boxes all over the place um and then pizza boxes and then um probably most likely either Eric Stenek, because he's pretty quiet and easy going and good sense of humor, or Staylock. Wheels, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, because I don't know if he'd stop talking the entire time. Um, but I would, it would probably be the most entertaining with Staylock. Thank you. Uh, you agree with that? And then tell me who the guys you most and least want to be uh, quarantined yeah, with. Well, I mean, it, it goes both ways. Obviously, a guy that's, that won't shut up can get annoying after a while, but <laughs> maybe that's just like on their phone and you know what I'm saying that could get boring too so yeah I think I feel like I feel like he'd be a good guy to just there never there wouldn't be any bad days you know no no dull times so that's good uh for me like my so my next door neighbor in Winnipeg is uh is Lucas Spiza and he's the man so um we've we've kind of like over the fence just you know whether it's having a beer or whatever just kind of kept each other company a little bit and uh yeah for least least guy um jack rosevic he's i think he's kind of i think him and greenway are buddies he's kind of the same yeah, yeah, yeah. rosie's uh apartment hasn't hasn't been cleaned or i don't think he's cooked in it ever it's and he talks a lot too and rosie's the best like i i love hanging out with rosie but i think in like a uh uh, an extended stay might be might be a, a little bit long. <laughs> kind of a wild card too and Shifes isn't going to like this but he might be a tough one too because for whatever reason I think because of our last names our rooms are pretty close on the road all the time 
And whenever I'm going down to to get like pregame snack or bring my suitcase down to the the bus, Shifes is always typically in the shower at that time. And he's always blasting like high school musical or like Taylor Swift or like just <laughs> just the worst, the worst music. So I think that could probably get old after a while. Blake, who's our guest there? Louis, say what's up. Hi. Hi there. You know any of these guys? Yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, Gabe, who's your most and least? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to probably throw one of the one of the Fort, Fortnite guys in, in the <laughs> least. I'm not much of a video game guy, and, and we got a handful of guys that, that just play Fortnite all day. So, uh, you know, you can take your pick there, whether it's Nieto, McKinnon, Zadora, one of those three guys. I mean, I'd like to have some conversations if I'm stuck with a guy in a quarantine. Uh, Eric Johnson, one of my close buddies on the team, he, he's just, he has a pretty addictive personality. A few years ago, it was, you know, it was high end shopping and then it went into horses and then it, he's been in horses for a while. And now he just texted me a couple of weeks ago about his wine collection that he's going to start. So I wouldn't mind being stuck in a quarantine with somebody starting a wine collection. So uh, that'd be my pick. That's a good one. All right, Jamie, I worked on the All Access show, so I'm really interested to hear what you come up with. Go ahead. <laughs> my my least would probably be Radulov. The, the guy's crazy. He's a mess. Uh, you never know what he's up to. Uh, you know, he's, when he's got his family in town here, there's, you know, his pops and his son, they're all just buzzing around the rink and nobody knows what's going on. There's just Russian spoken everywhere, so. He's probably my least, uh, you know, least favorite teammate to be stuck with. Uh, for the most, probably Ben Bishop. Uh, you know, fun guy, talks a lot. Um, I, I know he likes the red wine, so I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, getting stuck in quarantine with him. All right. A uh, couple more and then we'll let you go. Uh, what's uh, passing the time, I guess, at night? Binge TV? Uh, Seems like all, all the younger guys are, well, maybe not the younger guys are watching Tiger King, but uh, any, who's, who's got something good they're watching right now at night? We're on, actually, I think we're starting the last episode of Tiger King tonight. We're on, I think we finished six last night. Have you guys, anyone else seen that? Yeah, we, yeah. Saw. we yeah, just finished it a couple of nights ago. Yeah, I, wild. I don't know. It's, I love it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Yeah, we, I mean, our, we get them all down by typically eight on a good night. And then there's like a half hour of just numbness. And, <laughs> I know. and you're, you're, our wine collection is getting low. So, do that. and then, uh, yeah, I mean, we watched the Tiger one. We're watching season three of Ozarks now, but um, you can only pretty much get through one episode a night before it's just, you got to do it all over again. Yeah, we said, I mean, us last night was uh, I, we opened the wine at five and I fell asleep. Watch, actually, I fell asleep watching Tiger King at eight thirty on the on the couch. Um, but I know what that numbness feels like <laughs> once they're finally down at seven. It's uh, we usually don't even speak to each other. It's just silence for for a good good hour. It's great. Yeah, five o'clock cocktail hour. That's actually pretty impressive. <laughs> it's creep starting to creep into the threes, which. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, ah. Gabe, yeah, we, you? we're open to recommendations. We obviously just finished Tiger King. The hype was around hype around the Tiger King was pretty impressive. So we figured we we had to start watching that to to you know stay in in the loop. But uh, but we're open to suggestions for the most part. We you know play some cards and and play Yahtzee quite a bit. Um, you know with the little one, we don't put her to bed until usually we don't start till eight thirty nine. So um some days we go without even turning the tv on because it just you know you gotta change days. That yeah that's gotta be like seven seven yeah, nice. we got it i know seven feels like the problem is now we we like eight thirty nine because then she, she wakes up at six thirty and then goes back to bed until nine thirty. so i, I guess it. that's the I get that's that. the um advantage to that but we're open to suggestions any tv shows or movies you guys have we're we're, we're open to it Jamie, help him out. Oh, I don't know. I crushed. We crushed Tiger King. Uh, me and Katie, my girlfriend. 
I'm, I'm, I have a hard time just sitting there and watching TV shows sometimes. Uh, I started FaceTiming my buddies and playing N64. Uh, you know, we're just we're just looking for answers. Uh, lots of board games. Uh, you know, try and uh, you know mess around outside when it's nice here in Dallas. But uh, I don't know. I might have to start that Ozark. Ozark's great. Uh, I heard I heard the first season might be a little slow, but third one's good. Yeah, it, it gets going. It's it's uh. It's awesome now. I mean, we we got through. I think, yeah, I think like the first little bit of the first season takes a little bit, but then once once it gets going, it's, it's good. wow, you guys have been really generous with your time. I hate to cut this off because the guests are getting better and better as as we're going along here. But uh, let me go around once and let each of you uh, have a chance to talk to, I guess, your local fans, but fans all around, and uh, just tell them uh, tell them what's going on and uh, what they need to be doing. Zach, why don't we start with you? Uh, well, hopefully everyone's um, everyone's staying at home. I know here in Minnesota, we've got that stay in place for the next two weeks. And um, so hopefully everyone's uh, enjoying some time with their family. Uh, like we are, you know, and it's uh, with what we do, we don't, we don't get a ton of time to spend with the kids during the season. So this has been, been nice, uh, but yeah, hopefully everyone's, uh, finding some things to do inside and, um, and staying healthy. And, um, you know, everyone, you know, everyone back in New Jersey and, and New York, I know it's, uh, the hotbed there. And, um, hopefully everyone is, uh, is hanging in there. I know the country is watching and, 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 ho and praying for everybody. And, um, so we're, uh, everyone, everyone's, hopefully everyone's being nice to each other. Zach, Jamie. Yeah, I just hope, uh, you know, everyone's staying safe, staying inside and, um, you know, keeping positive through a, a tough time like this. I think, uh, you know, if we stick together, um, you know, and do the right thing, uh, you know, that we'll be, you know, looking forward to, to something much better. So um, hopefully we'll get hockey back soon and then we can start playing in front of, uh, you know, all the great fans of uh, the NHL and, and especially here in Dallas. Blake? Yeah, I mean, the most important thing, especially here in Winnipeg, is it's starting to get a little bit nicer out. So people are, you know, we've been locked inside all winter. So, you know, you got to fight the urge to to get out and, and do things as you normally would. I think the people up here um, have done a really good job of taking this seriously right from right from the get go. Um, we have Sam and I have some friends that are, you know, doctors or in the medical field and, um, you know, the, the amount of work that those guys have right now, I mean, it's around the clock. So um, obviously can't, can't thank them enough for, for everything that they're doing here. And um, yeah, just, we just got to take, take care of each other, you know, the more that people take it seriously, especially earlier on the, the shorter it's going to last, the, the more you can, can flatten the curve uh, in the shortest amount of time. And then you can start to, to hopefully get back to a normal, a normal routine, but, for the time being, like these guys said, just take care of one another and try to enjoy the time that we do have with our families. And, um, you know, hopefully we can get back on the ice sooner than later. Thanks, Blake. Gabe, uh, I'll ask you to do double duty. You can talk to the Colorado people and then uh, people back in Sweden, please. Yeah, obviously to the people of Colorado and, and people of Denver. Um, hope everybody's staying healthy, staying at home doing what you can and, and taking part of the social distancing and, and taking this seriously, just like we all said, if we, if we do, hopefully we can, we can limit the spread, stop the spread and, and get back on the ice. I mean, the one thing about doing what we do is usually when the world or, or the country is going through a tough time or, or something happens, whether it's a natural catastrophe or, or whatever it might be, usually as, as athletes, we have the ability to, to give people a break in their day and, and, uh, allow them to, to kind of get away from the real real world for a couple of hours and and uh, cheer on their their favorite team and we don't have that anymore and and hopefully everybody can stay stay positive and and hopefully we can be back soon and to the people in Sweden hope us alla hemma har det bra och att ni tar hand om varandra och ni tar det på största allvar och att att alla stannar hemma och och verkligen tar hand om sig själva för att det det här kan spridas fort och hoppas att Hoppas att ni mår bra där hemma och förhoppningsvis vi kan få tillbaka NHL och vi kan börja, börja spela hockey igen.